Hello and welcome uh, to this very uh, special edition of uh, Chat with Chair. Uh, we have with us uh, today Mr. Naveen Kundu, Managing Director, EBEX Travel Services. He is the co-chair of the Domestic Tourism uh, Committee of PICI and has been really involved with various uh, government agencies and tourism uh, committees to strengthen the footprints of domestic tourism in industry. He's, he's is young, but yet he's a veteran in this uh, industry. Um, I would like to welcome you, uh, Naveen, uh, for this uh, interaction in the chat, which is um, a very special and warm welcome to you. Oh, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. And always, uh, always a great pleasure to be involved with Fiki and with you and, uh, and trying to do something that I can contribute personally for tourism, because I consider tourism my movement. I, it's not just my passion or my business, it's my movement. So tourism for me is a movement. Thank you for that. You know, when, when, when you actually took over this role, role, you actually said at that point of time, all right, that your vision is really to enhance the domestic tourism demand of especially what is called untouched India. And, uh, you know, you, you need to work across uh, domestic tourism products, hoteliers, ground operations of various states, transport suppliers, individual companies, artisans, industry and local bodies. So you really put, uh, you know, put a huge wide uh, camp uh, canvas on that. But, you know, given that context, actually, the travel and tourism uh, uh, industry um, is was facing a huge uh, challenge uh, during the pandemic. We've actually had a twin blow, uh, right? And uh, what measures, uh, you know, you feel that the government and all other stakeholders could take uh, to ensure that uh, the industry remains uh, strong in the future? Look, I tell you, uh, as far as, first of all, what you said about my, my involvement with the domestic tourism has been there for the last 30 years. And I'm personally very kicked about the fact that the potential India offers for, for, for domestic travel is immense. And if our country has to become one of the largest uh, economies in the world, it is, uh, it is you know, tourism is, is one of the important, domestic tourism is one of the important aspects of it. Because, because, because the more we build domestic tourism, the more consumption will go up. And, and once the consumption goes up, the economy goes up. So we all know that fact. I don't want to go into details of it, but coming back to what you said about government, whether it is any government, you take it from the last 70 years, when have we had tourism as a priority area? Like we've had industry as an area, agriculture as an area, IT as an area, which came up in the late 90s. We set up ministries, we set up cabinet ministers. When, when did we really have tourism as a, as a priority? Having said that, tourism has developed, developed on its own in India. It's actually a, it's actually a field a business, uh, a, a component of the economy that has been always on its own. It has never been really mentored by any government or any, no prime minister ever show, has ever shown a real, real need uh, or, or a real interest in building the tourism of this country. When this new government came in, in 2014, I remember there were five T's that were spoken about by the, by the prime minister, which was which was talent, technology, tradition, tourism, and you know, um, uh, tradition. Uh, and I thought, and I was really, really hopeful that something will come up now and tourism will be given a lot of priority, especially when they also said that we will build 100 smart cities. Therefore, infrastructure will be given a boost. Now, infrastructure front, yes, this government has done quite a bit, which, which helps tourism. I'll give you a small idea, which I thought, which I've recently covered. Uh, is that we have how many wildlife parks we have in India? India, after Africa, has the maximum wildlife parks. In Kenya, in Masai Mara, or in Africa, in Tanzania, you will see several bushes, wildlife parks, where there are these strips made out there. There are no airports. I'm not saying there are airports. And, and Africa is like 25, 30 years behind us. There are no airports there. But what is there is, is you know, they have made these landing strips, which are not even concrete. And they they get anywhere between eleven seaters to thirty five seaters to land on those trips, and that is how tourism flourishes there because they all live on that. With the new minister coming in, I'm sure uh, you would know. This is the first time there is an intent shown by the government where we have got three ministers. We have got a cabinet rank minister 
and we have two MOSs. Now here I feel that there is some intent and there is some plan. I don't know what the plan is, but there is some plan. Looks like, you know, on one side, they are trying to put all the hill stations from Kashmir right up to Northeast under one minister and then the rest of the uh, country goes under uh, other minister of state and then the, the tourism minister, um, you know, sort of manages it completely in, the, in one piece. Let's hope something is going to come out. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And last 30 years, we've been seeing something or the other will come up. Let's hope something comes up. Well, thank you uh, for that, uh, Mr. Kudu. You know, just to put it in perspective, and the Prime Minister himself has been leading, you know, the uh, tourism initiative. You talked about the five Ps. Of course, you know, he, he, he actually led from the front in saying that, how do you develop modern day tourism? I think the Statue of Unity is a shining uh, example of that. And, you know, in addition to the five Ps that he actually mentioned there, uh, he's also given a, you know, a kind of, a, um, you know, a, a vision for uh, embassies and high commissions and uh, foreign missions overseas that they need to focus on three Ps. And uh, it'd be interesting to know that the first is trade, which is obviously interesting. Second is technology. And the third is tourism. Okay, so I think uh, there is a there is a significant thing, but perhaps because it's a concurrent subject, and you know it uh, lends to a lot of things. But I believe uh, that you know I think the government's intentions are there, and given that uh, you know, and how do you see that uh, you know there are large players in the tourism industry, and there are medium and small enterprises in the tourism industry. So you know, how can these uh, these these players in this sector? Uh, play a role and contribute to both, uh, you know, uh, tourism in the country and enabling the government uh, to focus on the right things. Of course, there's no denying the fact that there is a lot of intent shown by the current government. And, and I will leave it there and let's see what the results are. Your question of MSME, the, the, the small and medium enterprise and the large enterprises. Now, let me tell you, small and medium enterprises are the very backbone of the tourism industry in India they play a significant role and 85 to 90 percent of the inbound tour operators are under the msme sector barring a few three or four players two or three players now you come to the handling agents across the country now all the inbound tourism that comes in there are handling agents across our country from rajasthan to up to to maharashtra to goa to gujarat to kashmir to kanyakumari to there are handling agents now, there are again very small players who actually are handling your tourists, whether domestic or international. So again, it is the small and medium and small enterprises who are actually the backbone. Look at the development of domestic tourism in the sectors which are not so famous in inbound tourism. For example, all the major players have developed hotels in the key cities. And then key tourism areas, which is in Agra, Jaipur, Delhi, uh, maybe Goa, uh, uh, some, some hotels in Kerala. Now, what has happened? If you see... Wherever the domestic tourism penetration in India is, it's largely driven by the smaller hotel sector and the resort sector, 20 room, 30 room, 40 room resorts, which are again the MSMEs. So MSME, in true sense, is actually running the tourism industry of India. It is not the large sector, it is the MSME sector. And that is a sector we need to strengthen continuously. Even the larger players have to strengthen the uh, smaller players. And I think larger players are sort of... Uh, working towards that because a lot of ancillary business that is generated is, is passed on to the SMS, SMA sector. But in India, if you see every tourism product from, from hotels and resorts to tour operators, to mini travel agents, to, to cab and taxi operators, to, uh, to guiding, to, to artisans, everything is driven by SMA business. So small and medium enterprises to me is the very backbone of the tourism industry in India. Uh, some of the fun stuff and the interesting stuff that the new entrepreneurs are doing, you know, for example, how, you know, Oyo, for example, you know, your largest uh, room operator without owning a single room, right? Uh, so what are the type of, and you know, he started off small, right? Uh, so, you know, what is it uh, that, uh, you know, they, they could do? And then what should the government uh, uh, take to, you know, enable them and also to boost uh, domestic tourism, you know, and in, and inbound tourism. Inbound is a bit of a challenge because the flights have to open up and you know all of that. But last year when the pandemic eased, right, 
the ministry had taken a huge uh, step to promote domestic tourism yes yes right so what uh, could we do this time around to you know to boost domestic tourism and to support these large msme uh, firms so mr chana your question has two parts one is what can the government do to boost uh, the domestic tourism demand and what can it do to facilitate the msmes to 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 stay in the business now the first question is that how does the demand the government can do a lot and you and i know government can do a lot they have the budgets most important is that can they come out with a sustained campaign across all channels on dekho apna desh currently that's not really visible there is a talk here and there in the travel trade media something comes up one day in it, there's there's one one and a half column of a newspaper article somewhere somewhere on some day there isn't a sustained campaign that has been built by the government and saying look you guys have been under the lockdown for such a long time there is this pandemic we know we got to be behaving responsibly uh, a lot is being said and done about it but where is the campaign of the you know dekho apna desh across all channels like television doesn't show it social media doesn't show it uh, there isn't a P- there is not there's not a lot of pr buzz about, around it so a lot can be done in terms of promotion and building up of this campaign a sustained campaign called dekho apna desh and through that campaign they can also spread a message saying that look you've got to be responsible we are opening we are opening up the country we can't be staying under the lockdown for all the time so it's time that we are opening up the country step out you need to travel please do travel but dekho apna desh but with responsibility so all that campaign is not happening a lot can be done with that for the msme now this is something which is which i have been talking about for a long time we need to first and foremost before we start supporting them financially or otherwise what we need to do today is to set up a tourism council of india we don't have a regulatory council of india we don't have a tourism body which actually other than the ministry of tourism which, which recognizes some players there isn't a tourism body which regulates the business which sets the standards and parameters for conducting the business there isn't anybody and 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 this is something that we need to do today the 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 need of the hour is we've got so many players it's a completely fragmented area of business where where, where are we setting up a tourism regulatory council or a tourism council of india where we set the parameters for the industry state that these are the roles and responsibilities of each and every travel agent tour operator domestic operator international operator once we've set that up we will identify the need and the requirements of these msme people and that can be addressed for example providing them loans now recently we did see that there has been some uh relief given in terms of the uh the package where uh, they have allowed people to take 1 lakh rupee of loan for the msme enterprises what we need again as i said we need to first develop a tourism council we need to then identify the needs and requirements of these msme enterprises across the country and then we can develop a package for them based on their need and requirements for example they may not need money directly they may need they may need money through uh, uh long term uh, loans which are which are which are highly subsidized in interest now if there are interest subsidies given to people in export industry if there are interest subsidies given to people in other trade forms of trade there could be interest subsidies given to the people in the tourism sector because because they are directly involved in 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 in, in building the economy of the country so but for that as i said can we now after so many years after independence set up a council which recognizes their needs identifies their needs and then solves their requirements that's a that's a very interesting uh, perspective when you are taking but uh, you know if i would just ask you the pandemic has actually increased uh, the demand for smaller and lesser known destinations uh, and these destinations of course will see an increase uh, in tourist uh, traffic so what could the states and the center do together uh, to developing such destinations you know including I, connectivity you know you talked about air trips you talked about air trips the tourist infrastructure and accommodation mr chura i mean i mean i mean i mean again saying the same thing like you take the hill stations for example i mean i don't know i'm sure you've been to nepal right now if you go to nepal 
Nepal has one international airport in Kathmandu, and then it has all these small, small operate airports which are operating seven, seventeen seater drone airs to connect the entire country from a very small hill station to a very small wildlife park to a very small uh, uh, tourism uh, area in Nepal. A country like Nepal has all this infrastructure. Not these are not the airports, but but you are connecting everybody to an international hub like Kathmandu, and then people move on. Now in India, I certainly find either there is no airport, or then they say, now we are making Pithoragad as an international airport. Now what is the need of making Pithoragad as an international airport? People will still come to Delhi or to Mumbai and 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 you know fly across uh, uh, various countries into these hubs because they will not go directly to Pithoragad. So what we need to do is to develop in Uttarakhand. You go to any place. Where are the airports in Uttarakhand? We don't even have a Shatabdi to a place called Corbett National Park. Which is just five hours from here, which is a huge tourism hub today. Every weekend, that place runs full accommodation, and people drive down. Where, 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 where is the infrastructure? Whole of Uttarakhand, go anywhere in Uttarakhand, go anywhere in Himachal. Where are the airports? Can you fly down to Kulu today? Do you have regular flights to Kulu? Do you have regular flights to Dharamsala? Do you have regular flights to Palampur? Do you have regular flights to Dalhousie? Do you have flights to Binsar to uh, to Auli? No, you don't have. So while we talk about tourism, we talk about uh, you know development. The government needs to first identify these areas and come out with an immediate plan. See, please understand, planning is always short term or long term, but the actions are taken today. So it is better that the government comes up with some plan and say, okay, these are small areas. of interest and we need to attend to them immediately and 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 create an infrastructure yesterday only i read that ladakh will be further connected with air air and then there will be some five or six helipads they are developing to ensure that people are able to travel the length and breadth of ladakh a great step but that can be done across the country you know across all hill stations look at the seven sisters the amount of potential we have in the seven sisters of our of our country in the northeast belt just three airports i mean why can't we have these these places connected very well to the major cities and towns so that people can freely travel so we haven't really given priority to these areas and that is what the government needs to do they need to build the basic infrastructure and get down to the macro level before going to the micro level of uh, of development thank you you know you keep uh, coming back to your theme about you know connectivity and and, and really uh, you know uh, and and also fighting exploiting the potential of india right? because you know well, i can tell you one thing that i can develop a, a intellectual property because that is one need that i've always i've always identified that india is so culturally diverse every 50 kilometers you travel in india and there's a new culture there's a new there's everything everything changes the topography changes the culture changes we need to develop intellectual properties for people to come and identify with those cultures even our own indians are not aware of those cultures like in rajasthan itself you have seven different cultures in seven different areas the question is how do you get there people you will develop as i said that's a micro level planning develop in, in developing you know intellectual properties giving rise to the artisanship the the, the local artists but question is how many people are able to reach those areas i, I think i think rajasthan is very interesting but you know you have ajmer kishangarh airport you have jodhpur uh, you know jaipur jaisalmer you know udaipur you have so many airports there it's not necessarily but so, i think there are other ideas yeah so like rajasthan and kerala kerala has three airport rajasthan is one such developed tourism area which we always talk about and and that also got developed because it was a very big inbound up for years right. and it got developed but today also if you see jaisalmer does not have regular flights hmm. right but as i said the identification the what i identified is look at the entire hill station belt right up to northeast the himalayan belt which is a beautiful belt look at the look at the look at the wildlife parks then look at the areas in orissa or in other areas look at the look at lakshadweep and andaman now we have a sea plane in gujarat which came up i'm very happy about the development of a sea plane but we need a sea plane today from port blair to havelock for people to continuously travel but we don't have a sea plane there there is one barge ferry there which there are, which goes three times daily and that's about it now we need to identify those areas and we need to develop so if somebody is coming to gujarat and 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 the other day in kashmir in jhelum 
they've got this beautiful uh, uh, boat on the river from Amsterdam on the same lines as the Amsterdam Canal cruise. Great step. As I said, there, is, there are steps taken in pockets. Okay. okay. So we've got to take the islands of excellence around the country, uh, share experience, scale, scale and learning. So, you know, I think uh, everybody talks about a lot of inbound, outbound tourism, but one section of uh, tourism, right, which is mice, right? Uh, you know, how do you think and what, how long do you think it'll take to recover, uh, you know, uh, how, what could the government and industry do, uh, you know, uh, to restart the mice uh, tourism? Of course, starting flights is the first thing, but you know, I mean, even Fiki as an organization does a lot of mice sort of. Yeah, course. Yeah, yes. uh, but uh, how do we look at this sector, and what's the future here? See, Mr. Chennai, uh, mice is one big sector for any tourism to survive because it's an inclusive tourism. Uh, in India, we are taking a lot of steps already. So I'm, one thing I'm happy about is the government is working very aggressively in development of MICE. Like five years back, I said India doesn't have convention centers. Today, I can proudly say the priority is shifted to making convention centers. And we've recently seen in the last three months, two new convention centers have opened. One at Khajurao, where Fiki took its delegation. I was a part of it, which is the Khajurao Convention Center. Beautifully done, very well done. For the kind of size Khajuraho is as a city surrounded by the hotels, great, great step. Rudraksh Convention Center is opened at Varanasi. Now, in India, we need to have 100 such convention centers because India is a country which can attract large scale mice. One, the potential of mice in India is immense because India is an industry hub. So there's a lot of work that happens. And at, in our own company, in 2019, we operated 64,000 people in mice. Now, I can, one, Mice will come back as soon, as soon as you open the flights, mice will come back. Mice will be the first one to come back. Before a corporate travel comes back, which is the corporate travel, the business travel that we say, mice will come back immediately after leisure travel. Because most of the corporations around the world have not seen their people together. They haven't networked. They haven't rewarded. They haven't recognized. So what will happen is that mice will come back as soon as the there is a buzz of opening of the flights in the world. Mice will be a sector which will come back in at least three months from the time you start the flights within three months because mice take some planning time. I would say mice will kick start if you start flights by September, mice will kick start by January. But mice will come back and mice is a very important component of tourism. Uh, that will remain till the time tourism remains, mice will remain. And uh, and I'm happy and glad that even in the tour recent tourism policy of mice that government has come out with, they're saying that they will give subsidy, they will give like foreign operate, like foreign tourism boards give a lot of uh, grants to people to to keep to you know to identify their country as as a mice location. The government of India has already worked on it, and and they've already said that you know they will be providing a lot of uh, a lot of subsidies for. Uh, for, pe for the people in various countries who identify India as a next mice destination. So, so this is one sector I'm really happy about and kicked about. I think that's a very positive uh, note to actually end this uh, conversation. And yeah, thank you for you know, actually sharing with us uh, the kind of challenges that the industry is facing, what government uh, could do, uh, how entrepreneurs, and you know, you actually brought in a very interesting facet saying that MSMEs is the backbone of this and you know how MSMEs could get together and actually transform this uh, sector, the steps that government needs to take again, infrastructure, connectivity, publicity, you know, and, you know all of that that you talked about and uh, uh, you know, your, your whole upbeat uh, message on mice. So thank you very much for being with us and uh, do keep safe and keep well.